My talk today is about the art of short form content. And um, I want to start off by very quickly introducing myself. Uh, you guys might have met me around. Maybe you've seen me at Founders Inc. yelling at people. But essentially, I'm a short form content creator. And I've done these different characters. So this is one of my characters, and that's a Greek character. It's a pretentious Greek character. Now, this is a French character I do. Rich French European character, to be clear. So that was the European one. And then there's a tech character too. Why should you invest in us? We have no product whatsoever. There is no revenue at all. And guess what? I have no short experience. Part of sales and a big project. AI. AI generated, powered, sourced. So those are three different characters that I've done. And collectively, all these characters have gotten over 4 billion views across platforms like TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, and also Twitter. I mean, I don't, we can't even track Twitter because uh, these are only those three platforms. And there's a formula that I follow. And it's actually so ridiculously simple. What do I do to create these videos? I create a satirical, engaging character. Someone that is like plucked from a movie or some ridiculous person you've seen at some point in your life that you've like encountered or maybe like in a conversation with your friends or just from afar. Someone engaging and satirical. And I showcase these people in different scenarios. And for example, the rich French European one, it was when his dad refused to give him more money to go spend at a club. Um, whatever these different scenarios I find the most interesting ones. And this is the key part. I film these scenarios, these characters, in these different places, these different things happening in a realistic way. And that's it. Just that alone has created some of these most viral pieces of content. And this is, for example, one of them. The European Kid it has about 1.5 million followers on YouTube, uh, over 600K on Instagram. This is the new one I started, which is my main focus right now. It's called My Tech CEO. It's like a tech character. It's the one I showed you, the, the AI founder pitching to VCs. We're closing in on 100K here on Instagram. And um, so, oh yeah, and so one of the things I've realized, you know, 4 billion is just, a, it's a crazy number. You, you don't really realize what it does. But I think one of the stories, one of the, the crazy things that, that have happened to me, one of, one of the videos, for example, one thing that happened was, um, Actually, I, I, I said something in one of the videos that I, I didn't realize until after the fact. So I posted a video, and one of these videos is this one. So, <laughs> so this video, I'll wait for it real quick to end. This video, I posted it. And to be honest with you, I edited the captions last minute, I posted it. I didn't really think much about it. And sometimes I just improvise with these videos. I'm just like, whatever. In this case, I improvise like, I'm the richest family in Europe. And um, 
This video went absolutely wild, completely viral. But what happened? Every news media, like major news, news media article, started looking at this video and saying, he says he's the richest family in Europe? That means he's related to Bernard Agnot, the richest man in the world, who has a, a, a over $200 billion net worth. I'm not sure actually how much he's worth. And then there's this wave of articles that start coming out. Is this the other son? Is it related to the family? <laughs> Half of France, before I know it, sees this video and is start talking, talking about this. And then what, what happens all of a sudden? Then even more reputable news outlets. You might not know this one, but Le Monde is one of the most reputable news articles in, um, in, in France and in Europe. And uh, it's like the New York Times of, 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 of France. And then it comes out with this other article. It's like, no, exposed. This is not the actual sun. And there's this whole massive, all these articles, like reportingly false things about this being the sun, then coming out and saying this is not the case. All because of one video I did, the improvised video, where I was like, I'm the richest, part of the richest family in Europe. And really that, I, I laughed at that when I saw it, if anything. But it shows you the power of, and the, sorry, this is also another one. This is part of the Daily Mail. This is actually another video. It's related to an, another video. But I want to show you this. Like Daily Mail, also the New York Post as well. They're all picking up these videos. And they're like, who is this? What's going on? And so really, wh why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this not to like impress you guys, but if anything, I'm blown away by the fact that one video that I record on my phone with the right concept was able to get posted on Le Monde, was able to get half of France questioning if there was another son of this billionaire. <laughs> and Watched was a video I did about two years ago. And it did not get any views, it got 600 views. But that was not always the case. In fact, most of the videos I posted at first were like that one that you just watched. But what I've realized in doing this and in posting this content and in getting these views and getting these crazy news medias to, to, to post uh, false articles at first um, is that there's uh, very specific principles that I followed for a lot of these videos that have helped them get viral. And what I want to do in this talk is I want to break down what I've learned and talk to you about this like journey so and help, hopefully share things that are going to help you with any kind of content journey that you're going on. So another thing here is I want to also teach you how you yourself, like I said, can, can apply this to your videos. Um, because I think that a lot of the principles that I apply in my videos can be used for other content creators out there. And I know that now content is such a big thing. People are, so many people are trying, uh, experimenting with creating content you'll find there's a lot of useful lessons you can take and apply to what you're doing. So really, I think that there are four keys when it comes to creating viral content. And I'm sure there's tons of other things, but these are just the things that I've recognized in my videos that have been really helpful. The first one is you have to think about a hook. You see, every single second, especially the first couple of seconds, are gonna give context to a new person that's coming across your content and is wondering, what the F am I watching? And why should I watch this? So the hook is the most important thing. The second thing is, you have to think about what emotion you're evoking. What's happening in that video? How is that video making that person feel? Now what's interesting about the European kid actually, is the, the French character specifically, is um, it doesn't actually elicit a very good emotion in someone when they watch that. Who is this rich French European kid, this, who the hell is this kid? It almost makes you angry. But guess what? That doesn't matter, because that gets views. TikTok picks that up, and they're like, hey, whatever this is going on in this video, this kid's freaking out at his parents for not sending him $10,000. This is good, this is getting us attention. We should promote this. So that can be a good emotion, or that can be not a good emotion. Now, moving forward, I, I've kind of decided to more focus on a different character, and the MyTexio character, and, and listening better emotions. But something for you to consider here is, emotions can be either way. You could be publishing something about um, something horrible going on in this world, and bringing attention to that. Maybe I've seen these accounts about like human trafficking. That's not eliciting a good emotion in me, but I'm still paying attention. I'm curious about what's happening. Third point is, 
ask, create questions. You want people to be asking questions about when they're watching your stuff. You don't want to feed everything to someone. You want them to be like questioning what's going to happen next, what am I going to watch, or maybe getting a sense of what's going to happen in a video and then following through with that. And this brings me to the next point, the last point, which is you don't want to give the audience what they want. What does this mean? How many viral videos are on the internet where you watch them and you think to yourself, damn, that's such a funny video. I have to watch that like four more times because it's so funny. You didn't really get what you wanted out of that, but it like, it like triggered you and like you wanted to watch it again. Or maybe you watched like a stupid video of someone falling, right? You're like, whoa, like I have so many questions of what happened there, but you, you watch it again. The reason why I give this advice is you actually want to not give your audience enough for them to be satisfied. So they've watched your video again. They're trying to digest what just happened. So these are the four takeaways. Now let's dive into these and see how they apply in different videos. And then we'll also review some of your videos that we've picked out and talk about how they can be applied there. So yes, let me show you how we can do this now. So we played this video before, but I'm playing it again. And I'm going to share with you the hook and what I just talked about. Okay, so that video I showed you guys earlier, I want to very quickly explain something in that video. What's the setting? It starts off, what's, what's the setting? Um, who, who can tell me, wh where is this? Wh where is this? Wh what's happening? Anyone? Where is this? Some kind of beach house. Some kind of beach house, right? Um, it's happening in Greece. I'll give you context. It's in Greece. Um, immediately, like, we, we see there's a, we're, there's a, there's a, it's filmed realistically looking, right? Like it's like someone, it's like my annoying brother asking for more money from my dad, right? That's the immediate context. But so already there's a hook. It's like, whoa, this setting is interesting. And I'm, I'm curious to watch it. And, and then what happens after that? The hook is like, this guy is like crying, right? He's like crying. He's like crying. He's like, a thousand euros for some pizza. Crying, physical card. It's so ridiculous. People are watching this like, who is this rich, French, pretentious European kid? I have so many questions. You're not walking away from this video thinking to yourself, I saw everything I want to see. You're, you're thinking to yourself like, who the heck is this? I have questions. I need to watch this again to understand what happened. And that's why this video got 30 million views or maybe it got less, I, I don't actually remember. And so we just analyzed that video and just quickly I explained to you how those principles can be applied to this. But let me show you other videos too. Oh, let's try this start again. Dude, because I don't think that okay. you can... so, it's, so just in case we don't pick it up, it says, what the F do, DJ, what the F do DJs actually do? Sing the song on the spot. I think they make it ahead of time. So what dials are they pressing? What are the buttons doing? Is it a volume dial? Is it even connected to anything? Okay. So, um, why is this video good? What the fuck do DJs actually okay. do? Because I don't think they're remixing the song on the spot. Okay. Um, why is that video so good? That video is actually like, you might watch that and you're like, that's just a stupid video. It got 33 million views. However, but it actually follows every single one of those principles that I just talked about. Like why? Let's go back to the principles. First one, hook the viewer. The moment you start watching that video, there's this girl crying. You're like, what is going on here? Which actually is, the, is part of the third one, which is asking, creating questions. But the first one is hooks the, the viewer. Like you watch this girl crying, you're thinking she's like, what the heck is going on? And she also has a very powerful hook. What do DJs actually do? That's a great question. I actually don't, I don't know what DJs actually do. I mean, yeah, they like remix music and they, you know, they sense the vibe, but I don't know exactly what the dials are. So it's actually a funny hook, like just the, the words alone. There's a lot of emotions in there. She's crying. It's also laughter. It's like, what the, oh my God, why is, she, why is she crying about this? Emotion being generated, laugh, mostly like laughter. Questions. I have so many questions. Why is she crying? What is she doing? Oh, none of those things are answered in that question, but it's engaging enough for you to watch it and to like get enough context to be, to be curious about it. And again, you walk away from this video feeling like you asking yourself, what just happened? Like, I, I don't understand what happened. Let's watch another one. Stop adding my text at the bottom of your resume. Instead, invent spy 
spyware onto it. So when the recruiter opens it, their computer gets infected and you'll be able to retrieve their password. Now log into their account and send yourself a job offer. It's that easy. Okay, so I like this video too. And I'll tell you why I like it. This video, if anything, from the four principles I just talked about, it has a really strong hook. Okay, so typically if you go on the internet and someone's giving you advice about your CV, you'd, you, you, you're expecting them to say something that you would like expect from a professional recruiter or whatever it is, right? This girl says, stop adding um, like text in the bottom of your CV. Just add spyware. Like, who's, like already that's, like, that's such a captivating hook because then you're like, what else is gonna come out of her mouth that is like I am not expecting? And so this video, if anything, it does a lot of the other principles too, but it has a powerful hook. And the reason why a powerful hook is so important is because when you're starting off and you're building a brand, people don't know who you are, right? People don't need a good reason to listen to you. So the best thing you can do starting off as a creator is you have to have captivating, powerful videos that without even giving, like without you having to tell a person, hey, I'm worthy of watching, the hook itself is gonna keep them on the video. And that's actually something that was brilliantly done in this video. Like automatically you watch it, you're like, okay, this girl's funny. Like embedding spyware, that's not, that's not what I expected. So let's talk a bit, a bit here, like let's like take a pause. Like why should you follow this formula that I talked about? Why is this, why is this actually important? And how much do followers even matter at the end of the day? I wanna say this before we look at your shorts and just on this, on this point. Um, we're at a really interesting moment right now where social media is totally not what it was two, three years ago. There's this, what I would say, there's like this demo, democratization of views. What does that mean? Right now, one of you in this room with the right knowledge and the right skill sets could pick up your phones and create a viral video. Was that possible three years ago, four years ago? Maybe, but now more than ever, it's, it's way more possible because of platforms like TikTok, Instagram, that have made it easy for, hey, that have basically said, hey, if you don't have followers, you can still create viral content. You just have to create something that the algorithms are gonna like. And so now more than ever, you have your phone that can be leveraged, this little device here that can be leveraged to reach millions of people. And that's a pretty amazing thing to know. Like your phone can be used for a lot of things, but the fact that you can reach that many millions of people, the fact that you can create just TikTok videos that reach so many people that people will recognize you on the street, that's a pretty incredible thing. And that's not incredible just because you're getting recognized, that's incredible when you think about what's possible from a media perspective. Think about what you can do with your phone and how you can inspire people, how you can change the narrative, how you can get half of France questioning if there's a sixth son of Bernard Lano. I didn't expect to do that, but it happened. And that's really why content is so interesting. And I wanted to mention that real quick because I wanted to show you guys the importance of these principles because these principles are gonna help you create content that is gonna go viral or at least it's gonna guide you. So let's break down your videos. They don't get the journey because they can't see life through your eyes. They don't know how beautiful some things feel or, or how horrible some things feel or how horrible some things can be. They just don't get it. You know who else might feel this way? <clears throat> All right, so I have some feedback on this video. First off, my, my, my hyper-engaging mind says one thing, it's too long. It's too long and um, like you need to narrow this down. Like what, are, what is the fundamental thing you're saying here? And like narrow this down. This should be half as long as it is. And I actually don't know how many, how long exactly it is, but it should be half of whatever it is. The first thing is also, um, where's the hook? The hook is, uh, starts off with this little seagull, but um, I think the hook that's more interesting is what you're, is what you're saying, right? Like, 
what are you, what, like, what you're saying is more interesting than the seagull, even though, like, it is kind of fun. It's, it almost feels like a cool little film when you start off with, with a seagull and Golden Gate Bridge, but that's not a strong enough hook. Um, and it doesn't actually segue into what you're doing. Like, when you start a video, you want to give your audience a suggestion of what's about to happen. And if you're starting your video with, like, one completely different frame, and then the, the cooler part is the second frame, you're not really like, the audience is not gonna stay to see the second frame because they think the video is gonna be like the first frame, right? So starting off, I'm thinking to myself, this is about a, like a seagull. And then it's like, no, this is about some dude just pulling out some interesting motivational lines. Like, so like you should start off with that and you should think to yourself, hey, how do I take what I'm saying and make it like way more engaging and focus on 20 seconds of hyper engaging like lines. And just try that and take, just take one concept or break this down into three videos and for, for the different concepts because there was a lot there said. And I, if you do that, that means when I watch this video, I'll have, I'll have remembered exactly what you said because I think there was a lot, this, a lot said here and I think it was powerful, but I'm like, I'm starting to remember everything that was said just from that video. That's my advice for this video. Let's go to the next one. This is a work of art. This is bullshit. This is a work of art. This is bullshit. This is a work of art. But this, this is bullshit. Principal Kinchewski. Okay, interesting. Um, I think this has potential, but the, the, the first thing that strikes me is like, there isn't enough context. There isn't enough like, like I don't have a good idea of what I'm watching. Like, this is a work of art. This is bullshit. That's kind of funny, but I feel like it needs more concept. Um, I think there's the fact that it doesn't have enough context means that there's gonna be a drop off, which means there, there isn't really enough of a hook in this video. You start watching this, you're like, what's, what am I watching? Like, like what's gonna happen? You don't know, you don't really know that. So maybe there should be some form of a title. There should be something, something more that like gives the, 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 the viewer more context and understands what's happening. Um, I don't really understand what's happening as much in this video. So I feel like, I feel like that needs to be established. What I do like about this video though, is it's actually very unusual to come across a video where there's a chess being played. And I think that's actually interesting. Oh, that's interesting because like, not everyone's like looking at chess on their Instagram, unless they're like chess pros and stuff. So already you have actually like a, a different type of content that's being viewed, which is changing the dynamic and it's, it's changing what people are used to seeing. So more context, a better title, what's going on. Those, like, you don't have to like make it abundantly clear, but slightly more clear for me to be interested in, in seeing what's gonna happen. Like for example, if I was gonna do a video about chess, it's like, for example, like, like random, like come up with a, an idea, right? Like, like this guy, like chess player beats opponent in five moves. And then I would be curious just to watch those five moves. And then just like, I know that what, I know what's gonna happen. I know it's like, this guy's gonna get beat but it's gonna be, he's gonna do it in five moves, and then I can see it. Like, for example, that would be a video that I would come up with. Cool. Um, I like this video. Doesn't this video kind of make you feel like like good inside? It's like, oh, this is nice. Like very like smiley, like like a nice little music in the background, like high production quality, like that cool shot where like she's sitting down. Like so already the first this video, what I think is hitting is like it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good, and it's like that's enough of a reason to watch it. But one of the things I didn't really understand was I think again there wasn't actually that much context. I was kind of curious. It's like what's 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 going on like. It, I, the, the, the motion is a list is um, you elicit an emotion, but then I'm curious like what's happening right like in the video because it's hard to follow exactly what's happening um, like what is episode one but maybe that's also a good thing maybe that's a good thing because then it gets more questions being asked so this is like really one one of the things you have to realize there's always a fine balance between giving people what they want in more context and also getting people to ask more questions there's a fine balance. If you overdo it, then people know what you're gonna serve them. They're like, okay, I, I know what's gonna happen next. But if you're underdoing it, you're gonna come across a, a chess video 
and you're gonna wonder what does the bullshit thing mean, right? So I like the fact that this elicits a, a reaction. I want this to have more of a concept and I think it does ask a lot of questions but I feel like it's, it's, it needs to slightly veer on the side of, of more context. Let's see this one. Up. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Turbo. Okay, again, like, what did, I, what did I say about the chess one? I said, this guy, say it? So, sorry. Content. Content. Um, context. context, yeah, yeah. Context. This chess player beat the opponent in five moves. You go there, you know what you're watching. What do I, these videos are actually similar. Both of them have two different types of contents that I'm not used to seeing on my feed. I don't usually see robots playing soccer or football, whatever you want to call it. So already, like, it starts off, like, really cool, like, interesting. But there's, not, there's no title. There's no, like, context. And I feel like you want that because um, you want to give the audience some, some form of, like, some sense of what's happening. Maybe you could just be like, hey, I built a robot. Um, or maybe like, for example, like random, like, right? It's raining, it's, it's raining outside. So I built a, a football, uh, I, I built, sorry, I built a robot to play football. Boom. It's raining, it's like, it could even be like a text, like, a, like an AI voice. It's raining outside today, so I built a robot to play football inside, boom. That's like a 15 second video, and I know what's happening. You built a robot to play, to, to play football, right? Done, as opposed to just shots of this playing. I know what this is, I know what's going on here, but there needs to be more of a compelling concept around the video. Has already tried, but no one came to help them. Wow. Um, all right, let's, let's, all right, let's, let me talk about this. Um, okay, so, a lot of emotion, that's for sure. F this. Um, I think that video, actually, so I'm trying to think. So that video, it's, it has a very short, so again, I'll go back to the, the different thing. Like, it starts off with him talking, and then it pans to the, to the, to this other shot of him, like, going around, and then, like, like, you know, talking about the lyrics, the music. I think that, like, I think an audience, need, you need to jump to that faster. Like, again, if I'm watching that first scene, I don't get a sense of what's happening in the second scene, and I'm, I already may have scrolled off. So I would jump there faster, and um, in, the, in your case, like, maybe the, the concept of the video is not that important. Maybe you want to listen to more questions. Um, but what you're doing, what that video is really doing is it's, it's striking emotion. It's like, boom, it's like, this is a, like a song that I made and you can like kind of feel like that emotion, the emotions being like conveyed from that song. So I think what I would do is, is almost break that video up and jump to the song faster. And if you want, you could also add more concept. You could be like, I made this song, um, <laughs> I don't know, but you, for example, you could be like, I made this song after my girlfriend broke up with me. And then it's like, I don't know that, you know, for example, like the internet would probably find that funny and then, but that would still do well. I don't know that that's one, that's one idea. Um, but it's a cool video. Actually, this is probably less in my ex area, really area of expertise now. as a content creator. But I think also the, the starting, the starting, the starting, um, are good. Anyways, let's go, let's skip. Oh gosh. Let's skip to the next one. It's called the Human. It's an app that helps people with diabetes track their activities and understand how those activities affect their blood sugar. 
It was inspired by a team in Egypt. She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 2. We're also building a community diabetics through our social media. Follow along to see how many people we can help in just seven weeks. Can we do it? Can we do it? In just seven weeks. Okay, so, too long, and it felt like a corporate video, which I understand the reasoning why someone would make a video like that, because it looks, it looks good, but like, it felt like a bit of a corporate video, right? Sitting down, like, this is the, one thing you have to remember is like, when you think about content as a first time content creator, you think to yourself about what's going on on the internet right now, or what you've seen, right? So naturally, when I first created content, I was thinking like, oh, there's, you know how there's like all these like videos of like people going on trips and stuff and like filming those and those go viral. So why don't I try that? No, no. In fact, I like to do what like Tim Ferriss says, like do the opposite. Like instead of sitting down, making it look like a video you've seen in the past, do the opposite because people are used to those videos. Um, and so that's, 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 one, that's one comment, um, one critique. The other one is, it's, a, it's too long because there's a lot of different concepts. Um, I think you want to focus on what is the key concept, right? Like, you talk about the startup, right? You, you talk about how you met your co-founder, if I remember correctly. Um, how you met your co-founder, the startup you're doing, and then like, the, and about how you're like missing school, or something like that. There's, those are too many concepts, right? Those should be each individual videos. How did I met my co-founder? That's one video in itself, right? So I think, I'm not saying you should shoot this video in a, I'm not saying you should, or right, I'm not saying you should shoot that video in like a ridiculous way, like I shoot my videos where it looks realistic, but find something that's gonna be more captivating and that is less of what people are used to seeing. Um, that's, that's the key point. And maybe that doesn't work, but that's my feedback if you want to, to create more of a, a viral video. But otherwise, I, I like the script, and I think there's something there. That would be the only critique. Double life. Doing everything my parents didn't like. I moved away from university. I started dating a Korean guy. I'd sneak out of the house to be with my ex from time to time. I tell them that I was talking on the phone with my friends when he called. It seemed that the things that made me happy at the time made them miserable. So the only solution I had was to live two different lives. One version at home and another when I was in university. It felt like my family didn't really know me. The lines between my two identities became very blurred at a certain point, and eventually I forgot who I really was. After five years, it became harder and harder to live my double life. And so I stopped. I like this video actually. Um, so a couple of things. Um, I, well, number one is like this is a really nice like story, and I think this is a really cool like style of video that I actually don't know as much about, but I think it can work really well on the internet. And um, obviously, it did I, I mean it has 68k views? It's pretty pretty solid. Um, but I think one of the things I would do here is um, I thought the B-roll was, I feel like there could be different B-roll in here. Like it's like you like moving around, like drawing on a board. Like I think the story is really good. And I also even like the captions. Like I even like the text. It like kind of fits into this. But I feel like the B-roll could be kind of different. I think the, the B-roll could be more, I don't know what it would be like, but I feel like there's something there that's less of you just like walking around build space and doing things that could make this, that could fit into the video more, right? Um, that could be interesting. And honestly, what would be really cool is as we see AI progress more and more, it'd be really cool to see if AI could create, if you could take that story and then have AI create like some kind of cartoon, like fictional cartoon um, story of like what you just explained. Like my ex, like Korean, like going back and forth to see him living a double life. Um, so yeah, so I like the story. And actually, this um, is probably different than some of my videos where it's like all about really hyper engaging. I think you're optimizing here for an audience that's invested in the story and curious about what's going on. And even still, you're still left with some questions. You're still left kind of curious about like, like what happened after? Uh, uh, why is he, he's your ex, obviously, so how did you guys break up? Um, so people are kind of invested in that story. Um, 
And I think that what's really important is content's constantly changing. Sometimes you do the super engaging stuff. Sometimes you do the yelling on, your, on the phone, asking your dad for more money things, which is the stuff that I, I've done, right? But like, people like to consume different types of content and their tastes change, right? So sometimes, this, sometimes this slower paced content does better because people are less used to it. So it's actually up to you guys as content creators to experiment and to find, hey, what is the taste of content right now? What do people want right now, right? Because it changes constantly. There's always an influx. Sometimes people don't want high production podcast reels, super well edited, right? They want something more raw and unfiltered and interesting. So one of the things I like this video about, one of the reasons I like this video is, hey, this is not the hyper-engaging, like every second counts video. This is, a, I want the audience to hear a story that's personal and get them invested in that. So I kind of like that. I think what's really important here is like, every time you're creating content, like don't forget, like the best content starts with a, with a good, fun idea that you're invested in. The moment you start shooting content, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm dreading this process, you're not really doing it right. Like, what are the chances that video is gonna do well? You wanna pick an idea that you're like, hey, this is fun, this is interesting. I wanna try this out. I wanna get this, communicate this, and then focus on that. Experimenting here is like the most important thing. You can't think content. You can't think about what's gonna go viral. You have to experiment. You're not a pro, you're not a pro in thinking about, you're not a pro in understanding what's gonna go viral unless you're experimenting and getting real-time feedback, right? I can't think my way to a viral video. I have to experiment. Like, oh, this didn't work. Oh, the title was too long. Oh, the audio wasn't good enough. And then I start to build, um, a found I, have, I start to build foundational knowledge around what works from experimentation. Double down on what works, of course. Like, this is easy and simple, but it's really the truth, right? Like, like, once you find something that works, keep doing it. Like the moment we had a viral video with uh, the European Kid character, like it made sense to keep doing that and then to take that same concept and to, to like spread that into different characters. That's why I started the other tech account. Completely different character, but very similar style, right? Filmed in a very realistic way, very engaging shots, and that has gone viral. I mean, that's almost at 100K on Instagram and I started that a couple months ago. So double down on what you know works. And another really important point here is like, each one of you guys has different talents. Each one of you brings something different to the table. One of my talents, honestly, is the fact that I can go from this to, I'm a rich French European kid and I'm presenting to you. I can improvise, I can come up with accents. That's not your talent, that's mine. So it works well for TikTok. You guys have something different to offer. Or maybe you have the same thing, I don't know. But my point here is like, there's something inside of you guys that you can take and put into your content and you can elicit, like can, you can put into your content, right? For Mr. Beast, it was something completely different. It was this just like obsession with like looking at the algorithm and studying content, seeing what does well and just being really obsessed about the whole process of you know, creating long form content and coming up with the most viral video ideas that'll appeal to the masses. That's his genius, right? So you have to find your genius and find about how you can put that into your content, right? So that's probably one of the most important things you need to do here, because you can't copy people. Like, yes, you can copy people and get some success, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, if you're copying someone else's talent and you don't have that talent, it's not gonna work for you, right? So find what you're interested in, what you're unique at. That's, I can't emphasize that more. Um, because the truth is, when I started the European Kid, my brother, I didn't think to myself, I didn't find someone else that was doing that and just copy them. I explored that concept myself and just tried that out. So very, very important. And uh, we can do this right now. Um, if anything, it's less about um, creating a video right now that's gonna go viral. It's more about let's, how would we think about a video based on everything we've learned that could go viral right now? So let's think about a video. What do you guys say? and we're gonna get you guys involved. So let's think about a shot. What's a shot we could do? One shot we can do, I'll suggest, is me presenting something on stage and someone in the audience says something. That's one shot. What, what do you guys think we could do? A viral video right now, just this, this context. Go ahead, raise your hand, go ahead. I would've just recorded you like jumping into doing your improv thing and then I would've written like, 
this person is a fraud or something. Perfect. I love that. Yeah. So it's like, it's like film from your perspective. It's like this, or you know, one a concept I just came up with, like this guy has two different personalities. So it's like me, me talking, American accent, like this, and then switching into another character. It's like, that could be a concept right there. It's like um, this guy switches into di two different personalities. Anyone have anything else to say? It could be random ideas. We can turn it into a viral video. Anything. Go ahead. Yes, that's a good one too. Um, let's think. Lecture on how to make a viral shot. It's a bit, it's a bit broad, but it, it could work. It could work. You know a video that did really well actually? Um, there was this girl and her professor, um, so there was this girl in this class and her professor uh, had on the board, he said, your task is to create a video that will get one million views. And she, what, she, what did she do? She just took her phone out and she recorded the professor talking about that and then she just posted it saying, can you help me? And she got a million views. So like, it's kind of funny how like when you're creative, like anything can be a viral video, you know? So, so we talked about the concept of me switching personalities. We talked about the concept of me uh, how to create a viral video. Um, what's another concept? Go ahead. Uh, like someone from the audience filming and the caption would be like, this dude thinks he's Steve Jobs and you're like giving an over the top Apple style Perfect. presentation. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that could do well. That would focus, then the focus of that content would be like on me doing a really good job at like thinking, like pretending like I'm Steve Jobs. Um, that's great, that's great. Um, anything else? Yeah. You were teaching about how to make a viral video, but you're only in a towel, wrapped in a towel, like you were very interested. I'm, I'm wrapped in a towel, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, ah. and, and, and then you uh, go on to the last point and you're like, this is the last point, how to make, and like you start taking off the towel and you cut midway and the video ends. That's a great idea. Um, <laughs> could get removed from TikTok, but it's, it could work, it could work. So it's like, and lastly, I'll show you guys how to make a viral video. And I started just taking my clothes off and I wrap a towel, and then we go, and then yeah. That'll, that'll, that'll would probably do well. It probably elicited a lot of questions. Um, um, yeah, I won't do that for the sake of my brand, but, um, but that is a, good, is a good idea. If you want, you can do it, if you want me. You wanna, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, some music in the background. I could be yelling at you at the same time. Yeah, I love all the idea, all the ideas. Um, what I wanted to communicate here is like, hey, you can literally take any idea, like any context, like even just this stage, and like the fact that you guys are here, and turn it into this, like an interesting, engaging video, right? It's like crazy what you, when you think about it. Um, so that's really what I want to show you guys here. We don't have to create an actual video. Um, and, uh, sorry, yeah, do you guys have any questions for me? I'd love to answer any questions or anything you would want me to comment more on, please. So, uh, your, I guess, your strap for the, the satirical character, uh, was that just something that you, um, I guess, came to after observing how the marketplace responds to content and experimenting? Or is this, uh, did you get this um, alpha from, like, big, it's from somewhere else? Hmm, it's a good question. Like, how did I come up with the, the character? Um, I think like, um, I think it came from like, so obviously there was a bit of experimenting at first, mm -hmm. but like very quickly I tapped into my skill sets, which is like, oh, I can, like, I can do like accents. And so I think the moment I did that and I tried like just filming that like first realistic looking video of this guy with his accent, that did really well. And so instantly from experimenting and like kind of being like, hey, I'm like showcasing all these like, before I was like showcasing cars, I was like showcasing like scenery. I was like, that's not getting me that many views because am I like an incredible like photographer or videographer? Like I'm not, but like what if it was, the camera was on me and I know I could do decent accents, right? So it was kind of just moving towards what I thought I was kind of good at and then seeing the response of those videos being posted on TikTok, which was the first platform I was on. So yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Yeah, my question is like, how much does this apply to like more long form and just like normal YouTube videos? 
for context, I make like educational style videos on YouTube helping people to make apps and software. Cool. Um, okay, so I think that like my 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 thought process is, I think that if you have the short form skill sets, long form like and you can dub and you those work. Long form will come and you'll be even more engaging for long form and you can even think more about the concept. I think what matters for long form is like um, you need to really like know exactly like the content that is going to be presented. I think short form is all about like hyper interesting short videos that are shareable. That's what it is. Long form is like what's what's the key concept you're sharing. Like like in your case, maybe this advice doesn't apply as much because people are willing to sit down and hear what you have to say about how to build an app or how to design something for maximum scalability, right? So you it really the, the focus is on what are you sharing? How compelling is that? Now, if you tell me that you have long form content but you don't really have something interesting to share, then why the hell should I listen to you? That's the case for most long form creators, right? That's but so my my advice is start with a short form, learn how to master the art of attention. And then if you have something really compelling, you have a better sense of how to do it long form. Or if you have something compelling from the start, start with long form, or I would then challenge you, can you take those like interesting small tidbits and throw it into short form? That's what I would say. I don't know if that answers your question. Cool, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so my question is, so basically a lot of us are like building you know, products, AI app, software, whatever. So yeah. basically our main thing is not the content itself, but the content is what we hope to use to get more people, to get more attention of whatever else we're building. So part of my question is, do you think this changes anything with what you said? And then in this case, would you focus on making videos and content about our product or more about ourselves, our journey and everything, and then hope to get people to the product later? Say the beginning part, you said you're building what? Like an AI op. An AI op. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's just the, like just focusing on the product. Yeah. Okay, and tell me more about your product real quick. Like a quick uh, one-liner? I use AI to help you with analytics for your Okay, company. analytics. Like what kind of customers? What kind of is other startups. Other startups, so, so B2B, like B2B founders, startups, how much funding would they have? Um, I mean, startups with money, they raise. Like, startups with money, like, seri like seed series A, series seed. B. Seed. Okay, cool. So you just described your demographic, yeah. right? Your, your target customer. Here's why I think content is important for you, right? There's like multiple, so B2B companies have like a couple different ways they can reach their customer. Um, number one is just directly go to your customer and try to like cold, out, cold email, cold outreach to get, them, to get to them. How many emails do you get as a B2B, as a founder, cold outreach? So many, it's super saturated. Unless you have a really good cold outreach strategy that is really converting, that's really hard. My suggestion is how is content useful? Content is probably useful because if you're getting the attention of founders. So actually what's, what's brilliant about my, con my content for the tech one is um, it reaches that exact demographic and that was on purpose done. I didn't do that by accident. I didn't by accidentally reach tech founders with money. It was because I wanted to do that. I wanted to network with more of these guys. So my advice to you is, hey, what's content that they would want to consume? Yeah. And that, does, that doesn't necessarily have to be about data analytics. That could be, for example, in my case, that's a, a pretentious tech CEO, right? But I have their attention and so now I have, I have a, a way to introduce myself to them that most people don't introduce them. Like if I wanted to launch a B2B product, I would just go to my account and I'd start creating funny videos around the B2B product I was launching. And then I'd start DMing founders that are watching my stuff. I'm differentiating myself from everyone else that's, that's reaching those clients with cold email, with paid ads, all these things. And that's all organically through, through an account that I grew without spending, like, I mean, maybe I spent some money on like equipment, all that kind of stuff, my time. But my point is, dude, you can reach people in so many different ways, and you can reach people if you're targeting the right people with organic content, right? Um, that was a lot there, but that's, yeah. that's, my, that's my thought process around that. I have a lot of excitement around that, so yeah, I don't know if that made sense. Yeah, yeah. Exactly cool. Does, does. Like, like, the main question is like, okay, I have a product, like, you make videos about the product, like I show the product, I do tables, I do things, or I just start to grow an audience and then, like capture those people that my product is for? You can, you can, but dude, your product's boring. Like what, why would your product go viral? Yeah, no, exactly. It wouldn't. That's, that's what but what is something that would go viral? What is something that would go viral? I mean, I just did, the, I showed you the AI startup founders pitching to VCs. 
What is something that will go viral? And I'll, I'll go to you in just a second. Anything else that they're watching that's tech related, that's even related to data analytics. You don't have to plug your product. The, your, the, the product doesn't have to be what goes viral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What goes viral is the concept that's gonna attract those people and then they'll, you'll find a way to sell that to them. Maybe you have your link to your website there or you have a video just about that that's pinned to your profile. There's tons of ways to sell them once you get their attention. Um, so I would say don't focus on your product, especially if you're B2B like SaaS. Like, dude, B2B SaaS, like, so boring. Like, you gotta focus on the attention and then you can find ways to actually sell the product. Build a community first. Well, I mean, build a community and then find ways to sell it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. hope that helps. Yeah. Um, I know there's a question over there. Oh, I was gonna say, like, you could even go with similar content to what you're doing, which is just like funny stories, like, oh, I had to give this, uh, my investor asked for this number, and like, yeah. like, like the person's up all night trying to get it or something. So it's just like, you know, you don't even pitch your problem. Just like that person, the person who's like, oh yeah, I had to do that. Totally. You know, like connects them, and they, they're curious, and then they go in and see why you do that. Yeah. yeah. That also gave me an idea for a video. Like, I think that Build Space does this really well. Actually, I, I, I haven't really thought about this. What Buildspace does well is like um, for the the videos that they build that they they make. There's always like it's like showing a challenge that someone's trying to overcome. So naturally, when you're watching that, you're like, oh, I kind of want to help this guy. Like I think like uh, your video went viral, right, Brayden? It was like it was like this is Brayden. Like he has to get X number of users. Like it's actually an interesting concept of like showcasing a challenge, and then like people are like engaged in that. So you could even do something where it's like we launched this product. Now we're trying to find customers. Our investors are knocking on the door asking us for updates. I don't know, like I'm just feeding you random ideas. There's tons of stuff. You could do something around that. You could do something around, hey, it's not even related to the product. It's related to like what we think tech CEOs are gonna wanna watch. Uh, it could be something about the new, uh, you know, Sora update, whatever it is, right? There's tons of different things here. Um, but yeah, I thought that was an interesting, interesting point. But yeah, There's, was there another question there or? No, okay, cool. Anything else to discuss? Viral, viral video ideas? Oh, go ahead. What's your take on clickbait? Like, do you think it's important? I guess like, not clickbait, like clickbait because it's more YouTube, like, yeah. you talk about the importance of the hook, like the first like five seconds of the video. Mm. Is it possible to like, have viral content that has maybe less, less hook that kind of draws you in a different <clears> way? Yeah, it is, but like, you're trying to build a brand, so like, if you're known for like <laughs> just like clickbaity videos, like I never get what I want when I watch these videos. Like, <laughs> f this guy, dude. I don't want to see his content. So like, you're building a brand. You can do clickbait. It works short form. It works short term, but like, long term, people are gonna watch your videos and they're gonna be like, this is the guy I want to avoid watching, right? For YouTube, it's different. For YouTube, it's different also because like, for YouTube, it's like. Those guys are just so desperate for you to watch their video because they know that like once you start getting view time, that's gonna help them. So like they'll almost like think about clickbait differently. But I'm thinking about this from a short term, uh, from a short form content perspective. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If that helps. Oh yeah, go ahead. I do want to ask a question actually? Uh, I want to ask how you would how you would make content that uh, works and grabs attention that's about the problems with attention economy. How I would create content that helps with the, the problem? Yeah, that content that speaks to the issue of the attention economy, but it's also attention grabbing content. Yeah, so actually I have, I have a friend working on uh, something interesting um, that's like uh, an app that helps you like, it's like, it's like one of those like screen time apps. Um, so I think that like to grab people's attention about that issue, you would do the exact same things I just talked about and then you would present that as a problem. But, but yeah, I, I don't think it changes the dynamic. Like, the thing is, you can't create a viral, con uh, a, a, you can't create a viral video about how people are suffering from the fact that there's so much dopamine, like, they're getting so much dopamine from watching videos without following these principles, because no one's gonna watch it. Mm -hmm. Like, no one gives a shit about the tension economy. Like, no one cares, unless you make it engaging. I, I'm being serious. Like, do you think if I started a video off, like unless it was really smart video, maybe I started a video off and it says something like, you're not gonna watch this video because you're obsessed with your TikTok page. Like that triggers someone. 
But, that, that, but then that follows my principles. It's like it's a strong hook. It, it triggers someone to ask questions. Like, so, so, you, you, like, so how are you doing it? How are you presenting it? If you're going to start the video off saying, do you know 30% of teenagers struggle with, like, who's going to watch that, dude? Like, like, it's boring. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going on a little rant here, but I'm also just trying to make this engaging. I'm not actually, like, this, this, uh, this triggered, but, uh, but yeah, hope that answers your question. Yeah, cool, cool. Anything else before we wrap up? Oh, go ahead. What do you think about, like, I guess this isn't really as related to what you do, but like faceless accounts in general, mm. I find them pretty interesting, and especially as we get, like, better sort of ways to create um, videos at scale, mm. um, especially in, like, particular niches, right? Let's say, like, travel or, like, education, you know, like, sports, like, these sort of niches. I think there's a lot of, like, you can farm, kind of farm views with these kind of faceless accounts. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think faceless accounts are gonna be more so the case. Like, they're gonna merge even more. Dude, what's really interesting is like, <clears throat> the fact that this is happening right now. There are accounts where you go on Instagram and there's no, there's no one's face, there's no one's voice. And they're getting views, why? Because they're using um, like, for example, like Eleven Labs um, voice model or they're like training <clears throat> a voice on someone like some, maybe some celebrity's voice, which legally speaking, there's some legal things to be careful there with. They're training their a model on some, uh, on some creator's voice and they're using that person to read a script. So what I mean is they just have someone read a script and then they take the voice from the script that they feed them. They take a video that could be AI generated or just stock footage they find online and then they post the video and that could go viral. So like you can create video without even yourself being in it. That's, that's been here. That'll only be more of the case as AI gets even more sophisticated um, and things. And obviously that'll, that'll be the, I think the future of content creation will be like largely just AI, AI generated. But before you start telling me I shouldn't create content because AI will do it. Absolutely not, terrible excuse. Why? Because there'll be like, not everyone wants to watch AI generated content but that's not the main reason. The main reason is content is gonna be enhanced by AI. Dude, think about what I could do if I had Steve Jobs like clone right here as a result of AI. Like think about the content that I could create. Like it's actually insane. So I'm more excited about the fact that like AI is gonna enhance my content creation process by like 10x full, like 100x full. The scripts, the scripts, I, the concept, uh, the video concepts. That's already the case. I can use ChatGPT for a lot of my videos and like the scripts. So that's one thing that I think is really fascinating. And I would say, instead of thinking to yourself, oh, AI is like just gonna create content and like we don't even have to worry about that. It's like, no, AI is gonna enhance the process and help you create like in, insanely cool content. Um, so that's, I went on a little tangent there, but I feel like that's important to mention here since we are talking about content as well. Go ahead. So in that same light, I mean, it's, seems like it's worth, um, like as you're experimenting, diving into the, the realm of uh, tools that exist um, to help you optimize production as a content yep. creator. Sorry, say, say your last question. As it to help you optimize production as a content creator. Yep. Is it, sorry, is this a question? Like what tools? Yeah, well, no, I, no, it was more so um, like in the same, in conjunction with what you just said. Yep. It's, it's reasonable to like, as you're experimenting with your content creation. Yeah, to experiment with different tools. To, yeah, to, to the, the, the AI, to experiment with AI tools um, and, and aims to optimize your production as a, as a content creator. Yeah, 100%, 100%, yeah. And there's like tons of ways you can experiment with it. In fact, I think that the future is like, you might find a style of content that is like largely, like largely based off a specific tool, like an AI tool, and that just works. So for example, gosh, I forgot his name, uh, Subesh, I think. He was creating this like, um, he was in the build space uh, as well. Uh, he was creating this, um, this like website where you could just like create these like fake videos of celebrities saying things. I think there's a lot of legal troubles around that. But I was thinking to myself like, dude, there's so many videos I could do where I could just take a video of like Peter Thiel saying something and then like pretend like he's on a Zoom meeting with me and I'm like talking to him, right? There's like tons of videos I could do around that. So there's like, that in itself would be a whole style of video that you can do just because of these AI tools. And I think they're only gonna get more and more sophisticated. 
So, so yeah, yeah, but yeah. Any last questions? Cool, nice, thank you guys for your attention. That's what I want to hear.